with two elements a comma b when will this be a group if i have two elements when will this be a group one of them should be identity so let's say a is identity then what should be b b need not be identity but b is an element which should satisfy some property so supposing if if i say a is identity then b need not be identity but what is b times a b times e b composed with e is b only correct e composed with b is b only b composed with b what should it be it should be identity b composed with b will not be b right b composed with b should be identity so that is the this is a group if and only if a is identity and b composed b is identity under these conditions it will become a group in this process in this sentence when i am writing if and only if what does it mean this is both forward and backward both necessary and sufficient so this is a unique condition there is no other condition under which this becomes a group this is the only condition and we can go on asking these questions three element four element etc okay so <clears throat> let us reserve some of those exercises for the tutorial we will ask a question to determine conditions under which a set of elements become a group okay it turns out that uh, <clears throat> you can you can for example you can probably ask if g is equal to three element a b c is a group if and only if this if and only if sometimes we shorthand write it as iff iff means if and only if a is equal to e a b is equal to c and a b c is equal to b b equal to c and a b c equal to e we can examine these things in the tutorial so you can actually write down okay so let me just introduce another concept which will become clear to understand this group multiplication table group multiplication table now group multiplication table we will try to see see what you have to do here is you write in this row the elements of the group okay and in this column same elements and here you have the composition rule so here i will write what is the result of a composition a okay a composed b a composed c and i will fill this table this is called the multiplication table so already for the group to for three elements set to be a group we must have a to be identity at least one of the element we should designate it as identity now if identity is composed with identity we have e identity composed with b 
B. Identity composed with C, C. Similarly, this is B, this is C. So, this column and this row you can immediately fill up because they will be same elements as the group. Now, we must write B into B. B into B cannot be identity. Then B itself will be identity, right? So, we have only three. So, B into B, if I call it as C, B into B, if I call it as C, then B into C has to be identity. Correct? So, B into C, B is B into C is identity. And similarly, C into B is also identity. C into C is B. Only under this condition, that is the condition that I have written, this last condition is simply A is anyway identity, so B into C is equal to identity. When you say you have a closure property, that means in the body of this table, you should not have elements which are outside the group. Body of this table, you should not have elements that are outside the group. Now, if you look at a general structure of these three examples, 2, 3 and 4, they all have this following property. For example, C? C into C is B. <coughs> C. You have B C is B B is C, right? B B is C. So let us say B into B is C. Now if I write C into B, okay, that is equal to I am right multiplying with B, which is equal to B, B, B. But what is B into B? B into B, we have called it as C. So, C into B is same as B into C. Okay. Now, B into C, I have already... Oh, what is that we want? C into C, right? So, we want C into C. C into C, we write. So, but we know what is C. C is B. No, sir, you can take the last one. B huh? composition with C. Hmm. If I buy multiply with this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, you write B, C is equal to E. Composed by B. Composed by B. B compose, B compose C is equal to B compose E. So, this is C, right? So, C compose C is equal to B. Okay. So, from those three conditions, I can get all the elements of this table. Okay. So, this is the answer for the question why C compose C is B. Now, if you see this elements, these three examples, 2, 3 and 4, there is a uh, very nice structure. For example, if you take only singleton element, singleton set, the group is, singleton set is a group if it is E. Now, two element set, two element set is a group if, you look at this. One, you have an element B and B square is identity, correct? So, I will write it as B comma B square which is identity. Okay, I am writing B square. Please understand that B square is B composed B. Okay, and three element set. If you look at three element set, I can write B. What is C? C is B square. Correct? C is B square. 
and what is the other element? So this is actually b square, c is b square, so b composed c square is c is b cube. So I have identity as b cube, which is identity. So you can see here only identity, here b is an element and b square is identity, here b is an element, b square is an element, b cube is identity and so on. So in general, a group of n elements, I can always define a group like this, correct? So if I have an n element If I have an n element set, that can become a group if I can write b, b square, b cube, etc. b power n is equal to e. This forms a group, definitely. This forms a group. Now, a group, now if you look at this one, there is only one element whose powers will contain other elements, correct? There is only one element whose compositions with itself will become other elements and it will go on till n compositions, n compositions of the same element will give you the identity so that closes the group, okay? So like this if you have a group whose elements are generated by a single element, we call such groups as cyclic groups. Okay, so these are called cyclic groups. These are called cyclic groups. Cyclic groups are, it is like a cycle, b, b square, b cube, etc. and b power n is identity. Okay, so these are called cyclic groups. You have got convinced that if you have any set of any uh, n elements, you can always uh, construct a cyclic group, correct? In this fashion. But up to three element set, we have seen that the only group that is possible with one, two and three elements are cyclic groups, okay? But from four element onwards, you can also have additional conditions. It's not only these conditions, but there can be additional set of conditions for which the four element set becomes a group. So non-cyclic groups are possible for <coughs> sets which are having elements more than four. So let me now define the concept of order of a group. which is equal to number of elements, number of elements in G are equivalently we can define as cardinality of G order of the group is defined as number of elements in the set G or cardinality of G. Okay. Now, what is the order of this group? One. Only one element is there. Order of this is two. Order of this is three. Order of this is n. So, you can construct the <coughs> group, you can construct cycle, cyclic group of any order, correct, in this prescription, okay. So there exists a cyclic group for any order n 
greater than 0. Just for completion sake, I will write this as for any integer order n greater than 0. You can have a cyclic group. All elements of the cyclic group are generated by one element. That is called the generator of a group. Okay? So, <coughs> all elements of a cyclic group are generated by a single element say B with <coughs> repeated compositions of itself. repeated compositions of itself, then B is called the generator of the cyclic group. If b power n is equal to identity, b power n is the identity, then n is defined as order of the element b. Order of there is a difference. This is the order of the group. This is the order of the element B. Now, I told you that for, for, for uh, groups of order 4, 